Hey folks, how's it going? So today we're going to be looking into this problem called array partitioning. This is quite an interesting problem. So we are told that we are given um, an integer array nums of two n integers, and we need to group these integers into n pairs, such that the sum of the values within the pairs for all the for all the pairs is maximized, right? So we need to return the maximized sum. I know that might sound very mouthy, so I'll explain this with an example. So imagine you are given this array like so, right? So what you need to do is that you need to then uh, create pairs from this array. So the first pair will be one and four. Then the second pair that you can create is three and two, right? Then what you do is that you're going to take the minimum value within this pair, each pair. That you have created so the first pair is going to be one and four and the minimum is one then you go to the second pair which is going to be three and two and the minimum is going to be two then what you do is that you're going to sum these up then you're going to get three but the question that i'm going to ask you now is that is this maximum right is this the maximum that you can get probably not right so let's try again and see if we can get the maximum so now we know that the maximum that we got is three so let's do it again so this time let's try to take two and uh, pair it with four and let's take three and pair it with one so let's do the same thing we're going to say the minimum between one and three this is going to give us one and we're going to say the minimum between the second pair which is four and two is going to be two we can see that we're still getting three so the question that i'm going to ask you again is this maximum you're probably going to say we don't know let's go and look at another pair so let's do that again so now we're going to pair four and three then we're going to pair one and two so we're going to look into four and three what is the mix minimum it's going to be three it's going to be plus then we're going to Look at that another pair, which is one and two. What is the mini minimum? It's going to be one. So we got four. So this is the maximum that we can get. So which is what they retained here. So this is what we need to do for this problem. Now, how can we then solve this problem? So one way one can think about this problem might be that, how about we just generate the pairs, right? that's actually a good idea it's not a bad idea at all so you might think that okay um we're gonna put these pairs inside a list so this is the first list so the first pair is gonna be probably one four then it's gonna be uh three and two then you can gen you generate another list which is gonna hold different pairs this time so it's gonna be four three then you're gonna hold a one and two so you can generate all of these pairs and put them inside the list. Then the second step might be that we're going to be looping through all of these pairs, right? The next thing, we're going to get the minimum. Like, let's say you get the minimum here for the first pair. And you get the minimum for the second pair. Then you try to then take the sum, right? Then you add, uh, you check if like probably this what you just got is the maximized sum right you can write that logic so this might be your logic and it can work right so the only bottleneck that i see with this is that how do we generate these pairs right so one way we can generate these we can use a recursion right because this is a subsequence right so you can imagine that you can have one and four but you can also have one in three you can also have one in two so it's a it's a subsequence right so you can use those who know the combination sum problem you can write the same code you just need to make sure that as you generate this subsequence you should not select the number that uh that number twice so if you selected one in four you should move uh to the next element okay so that's what you can do but like i said can we see some sort of like a pattern so that we don't have to write this recursion and uh, skip this quadratic co term complexity? So um, let's think about it. So we said that we have one, four, three, and two, right? So there's a pattern. 
is that imagine if we can sort these numbers right you can you can think here we have four we have three we have two we have one we sorted these numbers right then we take them pairs like this right we take the pairs like this then we take the minimum right the minimum here will be three the minimum here will be one so when we add this up we are always going to get the maximum all the time as long as you sorted them all the time you're always going to get the maximum and you don't have to generate multiple pairs like the first pair that you generate it's always going to give you the maximum and the question is why that's because you sorted them three will always be greater than anything that comes below it one will always be greater than anything that comes below it right be now because of that if you take three like you're already maximizing this you take one it's already maximum so when you're going to add them you always want to get maximum a uh, maximum value so when they are not sorted when they are not sorted you see here they're not sorted when you take the pair one and four right and you take three and two so here you get one here you get two you see you get three so it, it, the, the, the maximum sum will be three then that means that you have to look again for another pair so that's going to be you know painful because you have to look for pairs all the time but when we sort we don't have to look for pairs so because we sorted them we know that three this value the minimum here will always be greater than what comes before it one the minimum on this pair will always be greater than what comes before it so that's how we're gonna solve this problem so let me now let's try to solve this problem from a code perspective so the first thing that we're gonna do is that we're gonna sort the array because of this way we don't have to like uh generate multiple pairs we just know that the pairs that we generate uh they're always going to be maximized so we're sorting in place so that we avoid um space complexity so we're just going to make sure that we have to keep track of the maximum value which is we're going to start at zero and we're going to say for i in range of uh, zero all the way to length of nums um, then because of we have to get a unique pairs so that's why we have to skip by two so by that i mean like you can imagine you have one two three four right so the first pair is going to be one and two then the second one is going to be three and four obviously these are sorted so you can think it's going to be three four two one so this is the one to be the first pair second pair just like so right so the skip here is means that when we start we're going to start here then the next we're going to start here okay so now which means that the maximum value it will be what uh what is it it's going to be maximum value it's going to be plus equals to the minimum uh of nums nums i all right and uh nums plus uh nums i plus one so it's going to be nums i plus one like so then what we can do is that we can just return the maximum value like so so this is supposed to work uh let's see and it does so yeah i think that's all it is to this uh so yeah um i really appreciate it guys the solutions seem to be much more efficient and yeah i'll see you guys in the next one thanks bye